glad everyone is here. Um, let's let's open with a prayer. Hold on. Oh, okay. Um, a, a little announcement. I think all of y'all were here last week. We are recording this, and we'll post it to the to the website so that if people want to. Uh, watch a recording. So just, you know, know that you're being recorded. Okay. <laughs> All right. Let's open with a prayer. Let us pray. Gracious God, thank you for this time. Uh, thank you for this wonderful group that you've gathered. We pray that your spirit would be with us to open our minds, open our ears, and open our hearts to hear your word for our lives today um, and, your, and your word for our church. In Christ's name we pray. Yeah. Amen. All right. Um, our scripture reading tonight is comes from Luke's Gospel, chapter four, verses fourteen through twenty-one. Um, and if, if if you looked online at the handout or whatever, uh, I did mention um, to, to kind of take a look at the the story that the two stories that precede the scripture reading, uh, Jesus' baptism and his um, temptation, and we'll talk more more about that in just a minute, um, but let's read the scripture for today. Then Jesus, filled with the power of the Spirit, returned to Galilee, and a report about him spread through all the surrounding country. He began to teach in their synagogues and was praised by everyone. When he came to Nazareth, where he had been brought up, he went to the synagogue on the Sabbath day, as was his custom. He stood up to read, and the scroll of the prophet Isaiah was given to him. He unrolled the scroll and found the place where it was written. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me, because he has anointed me to bring good news to the poor. He has sent me to proclaim release to the captives and recovery of sight to the blind, to let the oppressed go free to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor. And he rolled up the scroll, gave it back to the attendant, and sat down. The eyes of all the synagogue were fixed on him. Then he began to say to them, Today, this scripture has been fulfilled in your hearing. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. All right. Um, well, let me just uh, kind of lay a little foundation for our, our discussion here in a little bit. Um, first off, uh, the narrative context, you know, I want to take a look at those stories that come before and the stories that come after and that sort of thing, kind of get an idea of what, whether it's Matthew, Mark, Luke, or John, you know, what, what they're trying to communicate um, in, in their, the way they've structured um, their gospel in, uh, in the baptism of Jesus, the way it is told in the Gospel of Luke, it's kind of different than what you hear in, in Mark and, and also in, in Matthew. Um, the emphasis is, is less on John the Baptist and, and John the Baptist baptizing Jesus. Um, in fact, uh, in, in the story just before it mentions Jesus' baptism, it says that John the Baptist was arrested. Okay, yes. that comes after after the fact in 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 the other gospels, um, and again I, I think Luke is trying. It, it it's not that he's claiming that John the Baptist didn't baptize him. It's just less emphasis on on John the Baptist. Um, what we hear in in Luke's gospel, it, it it's even kind of past tense because the way it's said, when Jesus had been baptized, okay, it says you know while he was praying. Holy Spirit descended upon him in the form of a dove, like a dove. Okay. So the emphasis is more on the pr praying, the prayer, a major theme in the Gospel of Luke, the FMS. Exactly. And also uh, the Holy Spirit. Okay. So that's that's the emphasis in that. And also we'll come back to this later. Um, that that sort of um, anointing of the Holy Spirit upon Jesus in, in his baptism. The temptation, once again, we hear Jesus, full of the Holy Spirit, okay, returned, uh, from, the, returned uh, from the Jordan um, and was led by the Spirit into the wilderness. You see, again, that emphasis on the Holy Spirit, the, the, that the 
person of God, okay, uh, that, that empowers, guides, and leads Jesus, and of course, empowers, guides, and leads church. So he's led into the wilderness for 40 days to be tempted by the devil. Now, again, the interesting thing is sometimes they tell, they that they, uh, they present these temptations in different order and that sort of thing, and, and that's another conversation for another day, but the important thing I want you to hear, again, the first one is turning a stone into bread. Uh, no, uh, uh, no one lives by bread alone. Uh, Jesus, quoting scripture, and Jesus replies to say, nope, not going to do that. Um, shows them all the kingdom. We talked about this a little bit last in last week's lesson. And I'll, and, and I'll give you their glory and all authority if you worship me. Jesus replies, worship only God. Okay, again, quoting scripture. And this time, the third temptation is takes him to the pinnacle of the temple. If you are the son of God, okay, um, then throw yourself down and God will save you. What does Jesus say? Don't put God to the test. Okay, mm -hmm. all right. Mm -hmm. Now, why are the temptations important? And, and, and how do they kind of re relate to our scripture reading today? Anybody? I think they demonstrate his qualifications first. Yes. This is an Adam. Yes. Yes. This is the new Adam. Yes. Yes. Je Jesus is making a choice. And again, I think uh, that that statement, if you are the son of God, I think that's repeated in two mm -hmm. of, of the temptations. It really means sense. I'm sorry? It really means sense. Yeah. Since, since you are the son of God. Okay. But I, but, I, but I also think it's a temptation, you know, if, if you have all this power, okay, since you are the son of God, or if you are the son of God, since you have all this power, how are you going to use it? How are you going to, how are you going to use it? Okay. Now, this isn't the only interpretation, but he, here's, here's one that I'll suggest to you. Are you going to use that power to provide bread for everybody? Okay. You don't need to work anymore. You don't need to do anything. Just, you know, it. it Follow me as your leader, and I'll, I'll provide food for you every day. Okay? Now, of course, in, in Genesis 2, our purpose was to till the soil and sow it, and work, and be productive, okay? But Jesus says, you know, no one lives by bread. That's not the way I'm going to use my power as the Son of God. Okay? He's not right there. Right. Yeah. I mean, I, I think a, a good Calvinist work ethic is yes. still remains. Yeah, right. Um, um, will you uh, will you adopt the power of evil to control the world? You know, if you bow and worship me, well, also, and, and I'm just going right ahead. Also, I, I think again, it's for chance. You know, Jesus he has the answer. He is he just whips back into the into the uh, into the scripture. Exactly. Every time his rebuttal is always a quotation of scripture. So it's rooted, it's rooted in the ethics, the values, the character of, of the truth, the son of God, to, to, to your point. Since, since he is the son of God. And the devil, he, 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 and the devil doesn't have anything like that. Okay, that's it. That's right. That's right. Well, I, I think it's in Luke's gospel. Maybe it's John where he says he, the, the, the devil went away. For a season. <laughs> For a season. That's right. Uh, but you know, it kind of raises the question, though, if the devil's offering, hey, if you bow down to me, I can give you all this power. But does Jesus need the devil to give it to him? Why, why, and, why and, and what we have, and kind of back to last week's uh, lesson, you know, one of the, Jesus says, all authority in heaven on earth have been given to me. Okay. And I think that that same kind of thing was, was reflected in chapter 11 of Matthew as well. So, no, I mean, you, you, are, you, are, you are correct, but, but, but again, y'all are free to disagree with us, okay? <laughs> yeah, certainly Jesus was fully God, mm. but he was also fully human, yep. okay? Mm -hmm. There's a place, um, I, think, I think it's Luke's gospel, where, where it says Jesus grew in wisdom and stature. So there is a human, I mean, uh, Hebrews, he was uh, tempted in every way, you know, uh, yet didn't sin, okay? Well, part of being tempted, I, I think there are, I think there's also a human element of Jesus, okay, where, where he is, I mean, he's, he's not, I mean, 
I, I'm getting too, too far down. Yeah, yeah. 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 Um, all right. And, and then finally, you know, again, if you'll bow down and worship me and, and use power the way I use power. OK, I'll give you all this, all the all this authority. OK. And when Jesus was faithful to God, he was he received all authority. OK. But he resi resisted, resisted the temptation to your point because he knew thou shalt worship God alone. I mean, that's, you know, Ten Commandments. Uh, and finally, you know, I, I think that, you know, throwing yourself from the temple, you kind of wow the world with magic, okay? And, and they'll worship you because of, you know, you're, you're, you're supernatural, whatever. Jesus said, says, again, go put the Lord to the test. Um, well, again, well, go right ahead. Well, and also, I think it was, it, it, it's like he was put through all these temptations because he was supposed to be our our high priest here on earth, right? And so that, that we would know that you know we can go through anything because Jesus went through it. That's right. And 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 not and again, we're talking about the Holy Spirit, right? Okay, the same Spirit that, that led Jesus into the wilderness leads us through life as well. Absolutely. Um, so that's a wonderful lesson from there. Here's the point that the connection that I'm trying to make with today's scripture reading. Okay, and I'm going to say more about it in just a second. But what I'm going to present to you is that, that Luke 4, 14 through 21 is sort of Jesus' mission statement in, in the Gospel of Luke. Okay, so, so the, the, the devil is trying to, to tempt Jesus with, if you're, you know, if or since you are the Son of God, what's your ministry going to be about? And how are you going to exercise your, your power and all that sort of thing? Um Chapter 4, 14 through 21 answers that question. Okay. Um, let me say a little bit more about that. Um, th these, are, these are the first outside of his, his, you know, his, his words to, to, to the devil, and, and, but these are the first words of his earthly ministry. Mm -hmm. Okay. Once he passes the temptations, these are the first words of his earthly ministry. They come right after the temptation. <laughs> Different, once again, from Matthew and Mark. In Matthew and Mark, uh, Mark's gospel we hear. Now, after John was arrested, talk about that a second ago, Jesus came to Galilee proclaiming the good news of, of God and saying, the time is fulfilled and the kingdom of God has come near. Repent and believe in the good news. Matthew's gospel, again, right after the temptations, we hear, from that time on, Jesus began to proclaim, repent, for the kingdom of heaven has come near. Those are his sort of mission statements uh, in, in the gospel of Matthew and, and, and also in Luke. Now, Jesus does have a reference similar to those statements, but it comes after Jesus' teaching and rejection in Nazareth, and also some miracle healing stories that come right after the Nazareth event. In chapter 4, verse 43, we hear, but Jesus said to them, I must proclaim the good news of the kingdom of God to other cities also, for I was sent for this purpose. Okay. So there, there's the mission statement repeated that we heard in Mark and Matthew after these two stories. Why did why did Luke do that? Why did why does he why does he present it this way? Anybody the point that he's trying to make? Well, I think it's not just what Jesus is, is then, but what he's going to be in the future. It's it's pretty much like a roadmap of, of his whole life. And, and, and are, are you talking about the, the, the verse that I read from 43? Yes. No, yes. no the, the one. The, or the two stories. The two stories, because it was like, okay, I'm here to do this, this, and this. Yeah. You know, not just today, but very end. I think you're exactly right. I'm going to bring a little bit more focus to it, okay? What he says in this passage I read at the end of chapter 4, he says in his scripture reading, and in his teaching uh, in Nazareth. So he's saying the same thing with his words in a little more detail, quoting the prophecy from Isaiah, but he shows it with his deeds mm. in the healing stories in Capernaum. Make sense? Okay. All right. Um, 
All right, let's get let's get into the, the heart of, of the scripture reading. Verses 14 through 15. Once again, emphasis on the Holy Spirit, filled with the power of the Spirit, which was also an emphasis in his birth narrative and his baptism and the temptations, and continues throughout Luke's gospel. A report about him spread through all the surrounding country. Um, so again, when 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 Jesus arrives in Nazareth, when he arrives in his hometown, they've heard stories about the miracles that he that he does. And, and that becomes, there's actually sort of two parts to this reading, and I only read you the first part, okay? What he does is preaching in the very first part of, of his teaching. That's another 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 lesson for, for another day. Um, but he, but, uh, and again, um, he began to teach in synagogues. Now, synagogues were sort of the local institution in, in every town. And in fact, when we get into the, the book of Acts and then in some of Paul's letters, we realize that, again, Jews are sort of spread all over the, the Roman Empire. And many times if there was, a, I think it's like 10 men, that'd be men, um, then you could form a, a synagogue, okay? Um, always lay led. It didn't have any like, pro, sorry, professional clergy. Um, and they were a people of the book, okay? When they were in exile hundreds of years earlier, they began to compile a lot of writings, a lot of stories, and, and began to write the Hebrew scriptures and gather the writings of the prophets. And, and that process even continued to some degree even after the exile. And that's what rooted them in their, their faith life together in the synagogue. Now, they still went to the temple and made pilgrimages and that sort of thing. They didn't divorce themselves from the temple, but you can't be in the temple every day if you live up north in Galilee. Okay? Yes. But they were people of, of, of the synagogue. Um, and we hear again in, in various places in Luke's gospel that Jesus goes to the synagogue, and so does Paul later, you know, in the work in the early Christian church. And he was praised by everyone. Again, something that we'll hear repeated again and again in, in Luke's gospel. Came to Nazareth, where, where he grew up. There's parallel stories to Jesus going to Nazareth in, in Mark and also in Matthew, again, with a little bit different emphasis, um, you know, different ways of talking about that. But again, Luke has a particular thing that he's trying to communicate with his journey to Nazareth. Went to the synagogue on the Sabbath, as was his custom. Important to always remember, uh, Jesus himself in Matthew's gospel says, I didn't come to do away with the laws of Moses, okay? And this is my paraphrase. I came to, tell, to show you the true heart and the true spirit of the law. Yeah. And in the same way, Jesus didn't come to just do, a, do away with, with Judaism. He was trying to bring Judaism to the true heart and spirit of what God intended. He did not reject the synagogue. He, and, and he, he, he went to there and on Sabbath, read scripture. That was his custom. That was his part of his spiritual discipline. I'll talk about that in my sermon on Sunday. Um, <laughs> he stood up to read. Later, he's going to sit down. Why would, it, that's in that second part. Of, okay. Why does he sit down? Well, I think to make to make the point even, even clearer. And what is the point? Well, the point is that, you know, this, the scripture, the, the thing has come, I'm it. Yeah. I'm yeah. I didn't have a microphone to draw. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> Yeah. Well, look, again, let, let me let me say what you just said a little bit different ways. He 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 stands up to read scripture, but he sits down to teach. Okay, and, and that in their time, in their culture, that was common. And you'll see that in various places in the scripture. He goes up the mountain to preach the sermon on the mount, and he sat down. Okay, that's the position of the teacher. And the disciples would, would, would sit at, at, at his feet. Um, the scroll of Isaiah is given to him. He unrolls the scroll, found the place where it was written. Now, apparently in those days, there, there was sort of a, when I say liturgical text of the day, do you know what I'm talking about? Okay. That there was a sort of liturgical readings in the Torah, uh, the first five books of, of, of the Bible. And, but there's some disagreement about whether the prophets had actually been divided into liturgical readings insignificant point okay <laughs> e either way you look at it providentially it was the skirt uh, the liturgical reading from isaiah or jesus feels led by the spirit that this is the text for me to read on this day in this occasion 
He's, he's reading what we call Isaiah 61, verses 1 through the first part of, uh, of, of the second verse. And there's a small little phrase that he borrows from Isaiah 58. I'll tell you which one it is when we get there. What's the first thing he says? Once again, the Spirit of the Lord is, is upon me because he has anointed me. And again, I'm, I'm alluding to the baptism. I think Jesus is making that connection with his baptism. Well, I think but, he gives him the justification too. Well, I'm sorry? I think that gives him the justification. Oh, oh without question. I mean, I mean, well, I mean, wasn't well, it that the only like the prophets had anointing by the Spirit or something like that? Yes. Yeah, and, and in ver various places, um, uh, like th there's a point where where um, uh, King Saul is 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 anointed with the Holy Spirit, but actually leaves him at, at a certain time. But but yes, the that there were anointings, but there was somebody else in Israel that was anointed. What's the root word anointed in in Hebrew and and also in Greek? Anybody? Anybody? Messiah. Was really smart. Messiah. So, yeah. Yeah. Um, it, it's the same root word as Messiah. Who in Israel was, uh, well, I'll just come out and say it, the kings okay, uh, were anointed with oil, okay? And so that same word, it, 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 it's also, I think you, what was the word you used, sort of his credentials or whatever? That's not exactly what you said, but but I have been anointed. It, it, it's it's a messianic sort of, sort of ref, justification, yeah, uh, reference. Um, now to 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 bring good and, and and these are the things that that he's anointed to do to bring good news to the poor. Okay. Now, I, I, here's an interesting in, in in Matthew's gospel when Jesus preaches the Sermon on the Mount, he says, "Blessed are the poor." Anybody? It's good. It's good. Okay. But je, let's say Jesus repeated that sermon in Luke's gospel. Because it says the sermon was preached on a plane. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. Again, different emphasis that are being being made. But in, in Luke's gospel, Jesus just says, Blessed are the poor. Blessed are the poor. Okay. And, and, and again, I, I think again, we've got four gospels because it's both and. Okay. It's mm -hmm. both and. Okay. But I think Luke wants to make the point. I, I'm he's talking economics. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. In my opinion. Okay. Um, I also come to proclaim release to the captives. There's a lot of different ways we can feel captivated. We'll talk about that more when we begin to process our questions. Recovery of sight to the blind and to let the oppressed go free. Now, that's the verse that's borrowed from uh, Isaiah 58, 6, to let the oppressed go free. Here's what I want to spend a little time talking about. To proclaim the year of the Lord's favor. Does anybody know what that is? What what he's the Jubilee. And where is where do you know what that is? Liberty Bill. <laughs> <laughs> where else is where else is that referenced in the Bible? Leviticus. Yeah. yeah. Leviticus 25. Okay. And it's it, and and you would have every seven years in Israel, they would let the land lay fallow. Okay. So it could replenish itself, you know, minerals, all that sort of thing. Um, but but what the year of Jubilee was seven sets of seven. So that's 49, okay? And in the 50th year, once again, you, you, you would let the land uh, lie fallow, but there were also four releases, all right? The fallow land, debts, indentured servants, and anybody know the fourth one? It's real important. Slaves. Yeah, uh, uh, so servants, safe. but slaves. Yeah, yeah. It's ancestral land okay. is returned to the uh, original family okay now what I, what I mean by that is is when um, when Joshua Joshua led them over the Jordan and into the promised land and God provided the land to them they divided it up uh, among the tribes and within the tribes they divided it up among clans and within the clans each family was given a plot of land. Why is that important that you have land? Grow food? Why do you need food? To survive. Yes. <laughs> to survive. In an agricultural economy, unless Jesus was a carpenter, there might be a few other skills you could have, granted. Okay. But it, but if you don't have land, you, you don't, don't eat. eat. Yeah. 
You don't eat. You don't eat. You eat. Okay. But what, what, to me, the ethics, the, the justice that's behind the whole issue is God, God knew that there would be good years and bad years and, and good crops and, and bad crops and droughts and floods and all that sort of thing. And sooner or later, somebody wouldn't have enough money to eat in the winter or to buy new seed to plant and that sort of thing. And, and they would have to go out and, and, and um, you know, you use their land as collateral, you know, to, to get to get the seed. And if there was another bad year, they would lose their land. Okay. And there might be some people who would take advantage oh, of, yeah. of that sort of thing. Okay. All right. And so every 50 years, we shuffle the deck and we, we give things back so that people can eat. So, and, and often we talked about, the, you, you were talking about the freeing of the slaves. Often the way you would end up in, in, in servitude is because, is, is, is because you lost your land. Okay, so give them back their, their means of, of production, um, which is not only, to me, not only uh, survival, but, but dignity as yes. well. I mean, I think we're, we're, we're made to be fruitful in, 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 in our life. Okay, um, in the Sermon on the Mount, uh, the, the, the first two Beatitudes are very similar to what we hear in these things that, that, that Jesus says he's called to do, bring good news to the poor. Um, um, the Magnificat, well, well, that uh, where Mary goes to visit uh, Elizabeth, and in and, and the song that she sings, we'll talk about some of those themes are similar to what we're. Hearing. You could probably sing the song, couldn't you? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, he plays it better. <laughs> baby. Um, but he, here's one that I really want to point out. Um, you remember the story that in, in Luke's gospel, it, it's in chapter 7, verse 22. And uh, John the Baptist, boy, he, he's a, he's a, um, uh, a, 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 he doesn't kid around in his Ooh, preaching. Uh, he he right help, help fire and brimstone. Yeah. Okay. Um, and and, and I, we were talking about the Messiah. I, I think John had his own understanding of, of what the Messiah is going to look like and what the Messiah is going to do. Okay. And when he sees Jesus out there, the, the messages that he's preaching, the things that he's teaching, the things that he's doing, I think John said, this isn't, a, that's, this isn't what I was expecting. Mm -hmm. Okay, All right. Sends his disciples uh, to Jesus and they say, John wants to know, you know, Who are, you? are you the Messiah or should we keep waiting? Mm -hmm. Does anybody remember how Jesus responds? No one that sights being restored. Yeah, just tell him what's exactly. happening. Healed. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Go, go tell John what you have seen and heard. Blind receive their sight. The lame walk. Lepers are cleansed. The deaf hear. The dead are raised. The poor have good news brought to them. And blessed is anyone who doesn't bow me. I think. I think he says. <laughs> um, but do you see how again it's echoing that same thing? If you want to know, am I really the Messiah? Look at my ministry. What am I doing? These are the things I'm doing. That's what I told you I was going to do. Yep. In chapter four, they didn't call it chapter four back then. <laughs> That's what it meant. Okay. Um, the talk and the walk and the walk. <laughs> That's exactly right. That's exactly right. Um, again, we've already talked about he sat down. He hands the scroll back to the attendant, mm -hmm. sits down, and he says, and Everybody's looking at him. Everybody's looking at him. What's he going to say? <laughs> okay. And he says, Today, why's that significant? Okay. Today, the scripture has been fulfilled in your hearing, okay? In the Old Testament, in many passages, there, there's, there's a prophetic vision that, that a time will come when, when God will fulfill all the promises, you know, that, that many of the promises that the prophets are making about the, about the future. Um, in, in Isaiah 35, this is sort of a, a promise made to the Israelites um, that they will be redeemed and returned to Zion, okay, Jerusalem, basically, okay, um, and, and where we hear, say to those who are of a fearful heart, be strong, do not fear, here is your God, he will come and save you, then the eyes of the blind shall be opened, the ears of the deaf will stop, and lame will leap, speechless will sing, in Isaiah 42, there, there are certain uh, passages that are referred to as the as servant songs, and and again, that you can kind of in many of these 
uh, passages, you see links to Jesus. And, and from the prophetic standpoint, I think they're really talking about Israel, but there's a connection that not only does it refer to Israel, it, it, it refers forward to, to Jesus. I am the Lord, and I have called you in righteousness. I have taken you by the hand and kept you. I have given you as a covenant to the people, a light to the nations, to open the eyes that are blind, to bring out the prisoners from the dungeons, and from the prisons, those who sit in darkness. This prophetic vision in these passages, as well as Isaiah 61, Jesus says today, this vision of God's promised future is fulfilled and is being fulfilled and will be fulfilled in its completeness. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. The kingdom of heaven has come near. Mm -hmm. You see the echoing mm -hmm. of it? Okay. All right. Look, look at the, the great ends of the church. There's six of them up there. Maintenance of divine worship, preservation of the truth, shelter, nurture, and spiritual fellowship. It should also say of the children of God. Proclamation of the gospel. Motion of social righteousness. Exhibition of the kingdom of God. Where, where, are the, are there, is there connection with, some of the, with this passage, with, with some of those? Last three. Yeah. yeah, definitely the last three. In, in, in a sense, he's proclaiming the gospel in word and in deed, right? Okay. Motion of social righteousness, exhibition of the kingdom of God. I, I think there's we're hearing truth, you know, in, in a lot of in a lot of this. Um, they're encouraging them to shelter, you know, uh, and provide shelter and nurture. Um and this is done in the context of worship, too, isn't it? All oh, six. Hey, we, we work our way into all six. That's right. We've got a winner. Okay. Um, let's get into our handout and some of the questions. Some of these I think we've already kind of pretty well covered. Um, why was his temptation important? I think we kind of processed that. Uh, now, reflect on the difference between teaching and preaching. <laughs> what 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 do you what do? teaching is with you and preaching is active and i think it's interactive too it, just like we're doing right now okay we're we're, we're 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 working on this text we're trying to figure it out and i'm providing you a little bit of background but we're figuring it out together and and you know they, they did there is a form of preaching called dialogue preaching i've never done it and i don't know how well it works but but again it, it's you're you're in preaching it, it's more Presenting it to the congregation and 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 then let the Holy Spirit work in in you, okay. Um, but in, in today's, uh, it, it certainly says Jesus had been teaching. Emphasis is on teaching. Would you rate the passage Jesus chose to read as good news or not? Yeah. His answer is yes. Uh, well, you know, you, I think the trick question is that that it certainly can be both. Yes. How? Mm -hmm. well, if you're the oppressor, or if you have all the land that you yeah. cheated other people out of. Right. Depends on what side you're on. Right. In in the Magnificat, Mary proclaims that that this you know. The, the, the child, the, the, the future, the, uh, um, the scatter the proud, brought down the powerful, lifted up the lowly, filled the hungry with good, good things, set the rich, sent the rich away empty. Mm -hmm. Now, again, wealth in itself is not evil. I and mean, there's plenty of wealthy people in the Bible, many, many women of means. In, in Luke's gospel, the bankroll of Jesus' ministry. Oh, yeah. Okay, but it, it again, you know, the 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 love of money is the root of of all kinds of of evil. Um, and I and your your emphasis, Chris, on on you know those who had cheated, you know, people and gotten their wealth by um, dishonest means. Uh, what might Jesus have meant about the scripture being fulfilled in their hearing? What does that mean to you? How can anybody? Well, it was a prophecy that's been fulfilled, right? Is, is, yeah. is, it, is it more than that? No, I think that's it. <laughs> uh, anybody? I mean, does anybody hear more than that? Well, it's kind of like it's kind of like uh, someone who was at at the Super Bowl and 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 really there, and someone who watched them on TV. 
Yeah, yeah, in, in their in their hearing, absolutely, no no question there. Uh, and and I, I think I think in a sense we can say today, and it continue, and then the next day he goes to Capernaum and he's fulfilling it in his words and deeds, and and I I do think you know, in a sense it began that day with fulfillment, with the assurance that ultimately it will reach total fulfillment. Is that, is there is a, a feature of you have to hear it, that it's your hearing, yeah. that it's a personal, that is changing the relationship, that it's a more personal relationship with yeah. the spirit? Yeah, yeah. And, and I, I, I think, I'm mean, say, say more. I want to make sure I'm, I'm hearing. So that what, by saying it's fulfilled in your hearing, you have a role in. Oh, okay. I hear you. I hear you. Okay. I hear you. Yeah, yeah. In, in your hearing, and and, I, and again, in my prayer to start this, I talked about the Holy Spirit. Open our ears so we can hear. I, I think sometimes we hear what we want to hear. Mm -hmm. Okay. I think I said that in a sermon recently. <laughs> uh, uh, hear that. <laughs> All right, turn, uh, turn to the back of your of your handout. Well, can I just say one well, Please, the other yes. thing is, this was well understood to be a messianic passage. Yes, yes. So clearly he's saying, I am the Messiah. And what, yeah. what's interesting, of course, is repeatedly yeah. they kept asking him, are you, are you, are you, <laughs> even after this. Yeah. And yeah. At, at Nazareth, um, as we know, after this, they reject him. Right. And, and I would love that. Y'all y'all come back. We'll do a lesson on that. <laughs> I love, I have, have my own understand. Well, not my own. I, I've developed my understanding through the reading of various comments. Uh, anyway. Uh, Can you speak to this? I don't know if I can say I've always thought this, but at least for many, many years, I've thought this. Where it says, all spoke well of him and were amazed at the gracious words that came from his lips. Um, I was thinking if, if there were a time machine mm -hmm. and I were back in the time of Jesus, I don't think I would have reacted the way that it said the people did at first. Okay. Talking about his gracious words. I would. Yeah. I, I think I would have thought, who does this clown think he is? Yeah, yeah. And, you know, shortly thereafter, when, when he talked about how the prophets uh, went to the non-Jews, benefited them, then the people got mad at them right. and wanted to kill him. But I just, you know, I have the benefit of 2,000 years of, of history mm -hmm. and learning and, you know, being brought, brought up knowing about Jesus and going to Sunday school, but if I were one of those people and this guy came and said these kinds of things and the implication is I'm the Messiah. Yeah. I don't, I don't think I would have reacted well. Well, and, and, I, and I thought that like later on in the gospels, you know, with the, the believers and the not believers that I, I think I, I, I had an awful lot of benefit Sure. Of being now. Sure. After sure. all the history. And, and di event. different passages of scripture, again, the authors are trying to arrange it to make different points in, in, in the passage last week, and some doubted. There may have been some in Nazareth who doubted too. But again, the emphasis that they're trying to make is remember a report about Jesus had spread throughout the country. Okay. They're hearing these miraculous miracles that, that Jesus is doing in, in other towns, okay? And again, you know, they're excited to see him come there because he's, he's a homeboy, right? Okay? And, and I'm, I'm jumping to the second part of it, okay? But, but the, 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 the passages of scripture that Jesus, you know, he says, uh, doctor, cure yourself. And I don't think he means it so much individually, but hey, cure your own, cure your hometown, first okay um and the things that you've been doing in these other countries come give us the good stuff come give us the goodies okay but notice the stories that jesus tells and i think you already alluded to this says well you know the prophet uh, elijah 
Um, you know, he, he, when everybody else was starving in, in Israel, he provided food for, for a, um, a woman in, I think it was Sidon, okay, in Zarephath. In Zarephath. Um, and the prophet Elisha, who came after Elijah, um, he healed a general of their enemy of leprosy, okay? The point that Jesus is trying, again, Luke's gospel is, is ultimately to the whole world. Again, the sermon is preached on a plain that stretches out to the whole world, as opposed to on a mountain, uh, reference to uh, Mount Sinai, okay, Israel, and receiving the Ten Commandments. Um, uh, I'm here to bless the whole world. That's not what Nazareth wanted to hear. Okay, you should be taking care of us first. We should be getting more of the of the good stuff. And Jesus is saying, that's that's not what I'm about. Now, again, I hear what you're saying, and I would not be surprised if there probably weren't some that will admit it. He's Joseph's boy, isn't he? Yep. How, yeah. how can it be? I'm sure there was some of that. But the, the point, the point, the point that I think Luke is trying to make is that dramatic reversal. They all spoke well of him until they learned that they weren't going to get. The best of the best of the good stuff. Mm -hmm. that, so that's, that's my thing too. I mean, I've heard stories about how they were expecting a totally different sort of Messiah by the time. Jesus that's a big part of it too. And yeah. When the, maybe later when they realized, hey, that's right. not the dude we were expecting. Right. This was a factor of why they their their response soured. Yeah. Remember how I said we often hear what we want to hear. Mm -hmm. Okay. And we often cherry pick the verses of scripture that we want to mm -hmm. cherry pick. Mm -hmm. But notice, and you're right, it is a messianic text, but it's the one that Jesus really wanted to highlight as his understanding of what a Messiah is like. You're right. It was different. Then again, they were looking for more of a warrior king, you know, like David. That could be one of the reasons why John the Baptist was Christian. Yeah, sure. Because he expected what everybody else was expecting. And I think John, John there, was a lot of, there was a lot of ethics in, in John the Baptist. But, but he, he wanted he wanted that Messiah that's going to have the axe to the root of the tree. You know? <laughs> yeah, yeah, hellfire and brimstone. You know, kind of and and first, to your point, at the end of the day, even the apostles weren't convinced until the resurrection. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, they were, you know, they were hot and cold. Yeah, I mean, I can see it reading it. Right. I can see, oh, yeah. Well, I you think know, we all place ourselves that, and, and but say, would we be in a crucifying him crowd? Or, you know, I shudder to think what crowd I would be. Yeah. Well, I, I, to me, my, yeah. again, I'm, I'm, I'm quoting a, a hymn and not the Bible, but when we sing, were you there? Yeah, when yeah. they, yeah, yeah, I was, you know, because yeah. he died for my sins too. Absolutely. You know? So, yeah, yeah, you know, in that sense. All right, we got, got to process these questions. Okay. Um, who are the poor? And would you consider yourself poor? Or have you been poor? Yeah. Yes. And again, let's let's hear again from Luke, I think is primarily talking economics, but in the Bible as a whole, poor in spirit. Okay. So have we, you know, I think we've all, there is a sense in which we can all identify with this. And I have to answer the same way. I, I've never worried about where my next meal. Was, was going to come from. So I, I hear what you're yeah, saying. Yeah, never worried about it. Yeah. But poor in spirit. Well, I think to me that that's like when, when Jesus takes each commandment and then enlarges upon it. Yeah. Like yeah, yeah, you yeah. should not kill, but if you hate people, yeah. that's the same as killing them. Yeah. So to me, you know, even if you're not poor economically, I think it's expanded to being poor in spirit. I agree. So. I agree. Also, being poor, be kind of being left out and feeling the pole alone, and I think that's another way of feeling poor, is that you know you don't feel like you belong. Right, and, and um, I, hold on to that thought. Uh, mm -hmm. the, the the next question: What what are the needs of the poor, and should the church be concerned about these things? I, I think you've you've kind of answered that question. Mm -hmm. Okay. And and what I what I what I heard you say was that 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 sense to that you do belong. Yes. And 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 maybe also that somebody cares. Yeah. Okay. So when we're 
uh, promoting social righteousness, when we're exhib exhibiting the, the, the kingdom of heaven and proclaiming the gospel by, by reaching out to the poor, what message, what are we really saying? You know what the answer to a person times is? It's just a hug and a pat on the back. Yeah, yeah. But I want to take it, I want, I want you to take it a step <laughs> deeper. Okay. When, when, when the church goes out and, and feeds the poor or builds a habitat house or, or whatever else, are we, let me, let me lead you to where I'm going. <laughs> are we only saying that we care? No. What are we ultimately saying? Uh, that's it. That's where I'm, I'm trying to get us to see. Okay. Um, that proclamation of the gospel. Okay. That preservation of the truth. You're not alone. You know, in God's house, there, there, you know, there are many houses uh, in, in, in many rooms. Uh, and, yeah. God, God, God cares and, and God sent us to. Mm -hmm. yep. so, so you would know that. What other, I, I like that. They, they need to know that they belong. What other needs do, do, the, do the poor have? Just basic, like we said, that they be fed. But they have physical needs. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Um, but everybody has spiritual needs. Everybody has, uh, everybody can be petty for money, no matter how much money you have. You can, you know, we, we all have that going bad for us at times. I've I've often said, um, how much money do I need? About ten thousand dollars more than I make. <laughs> no matter how much I make. Well, I'm a famous line that that's what Rockefeller said. Is that what he said? I knew I got that. Most most of my good stuff. I'm, I'm, I'm plagiarizing from something from somebody else. Okay. How much more do you need? And said, well, just a little bit more. Just a little bit more. Just a little bit more. I think it's a gift. Yes, that. Absolutely. Without question. And and I, I, I joke about it, but you're exactly yeah. right. So you need that gift no matter where you mm -hmm. are. Because you're poor in spirit. Mm -hmm. Yep. Okay. And so what we're trying to do is to bring good news to people that, that life and meaning and, and quality and, and depth of purpose aren't found in the accumulation of, of wealth. Now, I will say, um, it sure, help, sure helps to have enough money to eat. Okay. And to have a, a shelter, a roof of, over your head. Okay, and and so let, let me let me ask let me take that a step further. Um, if you're really poor, and you're really hungry, and you're really cold, how much do you want to hear that God loves you? Not much. You want physical. <laughs> How can you even hear that message until he until you wait, until you answer? They answer no, he doesn't. If this if this is love, uh, yeah, yeah, exactly, yeah. Yeah. exactly. And you know, James refers to that to me when he says, you know, if you have wealth and you see someone poor and you say, you know, be blessed. And, and don't give them yep. food, clothing, and shelter, then what good is, yep. is your faith? That's right. Not much at all. And, and I think we've answered the next question. What would be good news for one in poverty? How do you preach to the poor? Um, you, you feed them. And, and, and in that act, you're communicating, you know, that, that God loves you. Oh, this feels like love. You know, it's an act of a glass of water and a bread. And a hug. And a, hug. <laughs> and a brownie. And a job. <laughs> and health care. And all of that. Because, you know, uh, any self-respecting person doesn't want to just take, 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 take yeah. from the right. generosity yeah. of others. Right. And, so, and, you know, and that providing, gets into the promotion of social, social right, rights. Providing a, a way for, An opportunity. for people to yeah. become contributing yeah. Members of whatever society yeah. they're in, right, is important as well. You me, I, I mean, the you. food, clothing, and shelter is first, and health care, all of that. But <laughs> you can't. It doesn't do anybody any good to to be a taker all the time. Right. Well, I agree with you. Although at first, you know, like babies have to be takers, and, right. and people without anything have to be takers. But that should not be the end of it. Yeah. 
All right, and, and what are the various ways that we are captives? Mm -hmm. When you have nothing, then you're a captive of, of poverty. poverty. Okay, that's a great example. There are many others. That's a great one. What what other ways are we captive to having money too? If you have a lot of money, you want more. Captive to greed to greed. Yeah. 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 That's good. Yeah. That's good. Yeah. Captive to addictions. Yeah. Any, yeah. any kind of addiction. Absolutely. Captive to time sucks. Time sucks. Yeah. It's a lot of money. I mean, they're captivating for some people. Yeah. Other ways? Okay. Release to the captives. Um <clears throat> Name ways um, that this church does or could minister to such people. The Sunday dinners were a nice thing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there's people on the bus. So many times. Yeah. So there were people yeah. on the bus from other little towns and came every. We only did that for just over a year, and then the pandemic. Pandemic shut it down. Yeah, yeah. And it was really, it, it was. One of the better things we've done. In well, the well, no I one think. that we do every every summer is the vacation Bible school. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's people, people come not not just from I mean all over, right? I used to attend two churches who went to city team, and they had a worship service that the the, the church people led, and then helped serve food. And then I found out something interesting. They they wanted the uh, customers, so to speak. To help out and, and be the server, so that the, 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 those churches didn't go down and and, and yeah. actually serve the food anymore. Yeah. Yeah. Year, years yeah. ago, when City Team first started, we would do the worship service and prepare the food and serve the food before they went into their other way of doing it, like what you said. But we don't do that anymore. We did that for years. Yeah. It was a routine schedule. So. Yeah. Um, Should we have sent them first in that question? <laughs> <laughs> uh, if if y'all see anybody raising their hand over there, let me know. <laughs> yeah. I'm real bad about looking up. Um, or, you, or you can also unmute yourself and say, hey, David, I got a question for you. <laughs> um, I think some of our, our mission contributions, mission budget, mm -hmm. uh, do, like, does a little bit for taking care of the people. Needs, needs. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, all, all over the world. We have food pantries. And yeah, yeah, have, yeah. Uh, when strangers come in, we have uh, Presbyterians, unlike me, who are stiffs, who will go and say hello to strangers. <laughs> That's what we do. And that makes a lot of sense. Mm -hmm. but, but I, I think what right. we do is a drop in the bucket of what needs to be done. Oh, well, you can always do more. Well, I mean, any one church congregation, I think, can do so much. Yes, right. I agree. And it is a drop in the bucket. But a lot of churches are, are doing the same kind of thing, as well as, as other faith groups, mm -hmm. as well as uh, secular groups. Yeah. Um, But it's not enough. Mm -hmm. Well, part of it's based on the gifts of the people who are in the church, so that you know a ministry is going to thrive based on some people's yeah. gifts. Oh, and yeah. then you have to let the Sunday dinner. Yeah, the yeah. people come. Yeah. But then you have to make room for people with other gifts who are going to do something different and maybe warm waxes, warm wings. Now, and I think back to the point that I was trying to make. And Jesus says, "Today, this passage is fulfilled." But it's an ongoing fulfillment. Yep. Yep. And ultimately, we believe there'll come a day when everybody has a full belly. But we ain't there yet. Man. Therefore, keep working. we need to keep claiming the gospel and preserving the truth that is this is an important part of life. And, it, and it's not true, not because the resources aren't there. It's, it's a matter of will. I agree. I totally I mean, agree I with you. absolutely believe that. Got to keep preaching there, that gospel. Yeah, there, there is no reason. There is plenty of money and resources to take care of everybody's needs. Yeah. And we just don't have the, the will to do it because of our brokenness and sin and totally systemic <laughs> problems and so forth. I think I said this last week, but you, I'll, I'll repeat it again. When Jesus says in the New Testament, quoting 
Deuteronomy, the poor will be with you always. Mm -hmm. Some people have taken that said, well, you know, there's only so much we can do because you're never going to solve the problem. The poor will be with you always. But in Deuteronomy, when, when that statement occurs, he's already, the Deuteronomy says, you got to go out there and feed the poor. You got to go out and all these things. It's important to do those things. But I think the implication is, I know you're not going to, or all yeah. of you won't, or you won't, you won't do it to its completion. Therefore, because of your greed, the poor will be with you always. Absolutely. I think it's a challenge. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, well, and, and, and it gets into, um, you know, y'all were talking about being captives of our greed. And, mm -hmm. and, yep. and, and again, gener generosity is, is, is well, I've gone to preaching. Um, <laughs> uh, generosity is recognizing how you've been blessed, mm -hmm. how, how God has opened your eyes to see, uh, how God has, has freed you from, from some, not all. Uh, of, of your captivity and 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 all the ways that God has blessed you, so there's a burning desire in you, as Paul said to Abraham, to be a blessing. Yep. Okay. So it, it part of what God's to is to produce a generous heart. Yep. Okay. And then that nurture part, shelter, nurture, and spiritual fellowship. That's the sermon for this Sunday. <laughs> We're supposed to be teaching these ethics in church and developing generous hearts. So that more and more, so we can go out and, and do, yep. proclaim the gospel in word yep. and in deed. All right, finally, um, even Jesus, well, I got ahead of myself. Even Jesus ministered with help. Who was Jesus' help in this person? The apostles. apostles. Okay. Um, why is it important that we engage in cooperative uh, um, uh, community ministry? You were mentioning the food bank. I guess that's that's one yeah, the com uh, community ministry we, we participate with. Um, name congregations or organizations with which we cooperate in ministry. How did these ministries begin? You, we've named one, and, and and you were talking about what, what you, you mentioned something. So you, there it is. Okay. All right. Uh, the men of Mission East Side, Chester East Side. Or, okay. Yeah. 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 yeah, and and our Linton loaves of bread are supporting. So th those are organizations that we participate with. Okay, others. Okay, all right. Um, can, can can you see how? What 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 I, what I'm trying to to do in these series of lessons is to help us to see what is a church supposed to be doing. Okay, and and, and again. Different churches have different abilities, okay? And limitations. If, yeah, that's, that's exactly what I'm trying to say. If you're a church where all of your members are in their later 80s and 90s, <laughs> you may not want to be building habitat for humanity houses. Now, maybe some of them could, okay? But they're, even um, Jimmy Carter reached a point where he said, yeah. I got to hang, I gotta hang on my hand, yeah. okay? Um, if... If you live and if the demographics of the area in which you live have no young people, maybe you don't want to do a young people's ministry, okay, in your community. On the other hand, a church that I, my first church that I served in, in uh, interim ministry, there were neighborhoods popping up everywhere, okay? Mm -hmm. And there were some of the people in the church who, who said, yeah, we want to be, we want to say the size we're at because we can know everybody's name and, mm -hmm. and, and we, you know, we like, we like things just the way they are. But what they ultimately decided was in the community in which they, they lived, they're called to promote the gospel. Okay. And, and to invite people in, okay. in into their fellowship, because you're a church, it, it's, I'm preaching again, but I think that's what I'm supposed to do. It, it's, it's not about you. Okay, and, and, and your needs and your concerns are important, okay, but there's something more important that we're about here, and that's being a church, okay? mm -hmm. and so you got to look at these great ends of the church and these lessons that we're hearing about going out into the world and making disciples of all nations, teaching them, baptizing them, bringing them into the fellowship, nurturing them, helping them to grow. Show them there's, there's a bigger thing out there than themselves. That's right. That's right. It's not. It's not about. It's not about you. It's about God. It's about God's kingdom. And and 
loving God, <laughs> loving your neighbor. Okay. So again, just trying to get a clear understanding of what it means to be a church. I've done enough talking. <laughs> Any closing words? Folks in TV land, anything to add? Let's close with a prayer. Gracious God, we are the church. We're the body of Christ. Um, you have anointed this church with your Holy Spirit. Um, help us to see and understand ways that we can proclaim your kingdom. Ways that we can continue this, this ministry of, of bringing good news to the poor, release to the captives, recovery of sight to the blind and letting the oppressed go free, and to proclaim the year of your favor. Mm -hmm. These things we pray in the name of your, of your Son, our Savior, our Messiah, our Jesus, our Lord. Mm -hmm. Amen. 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 I guess I was a little redundant there because Christ is the Greek version of Messiah. So I said Messiah two times. Get you enough. That's all right. Get you enough. That's right. Amen, brother. <laughs> Thank y'all. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.